So, sorry about that. Windows wanted to reboot it a couple times. Uh, Linus Travala said it best when he said that computers are like air conditioning. They're both useless once you open Windows. Um, but it is the thing that lets me write on the screen, so I guess it's not useless, but, you know, it might be. Um, it could have, I guess, gone the iPad route. Um, that would have worked, too. Um, anyway, how is everybody? Uh, test is soon. I'm putting the stuff together. Okay, so as usual, there is Twitch chat uh, over there where you can speak. Um, and there is Discord chat. Twitch chat is public. Discord chat is private to the class or to the classes that I'm teaching. Um, okay, so we had a little quiz. Last time we talked about functions. Um, we talked about it some more the time before. Uh, so let's talk about what a mathematician refers to as a function or what a computer person refers to as a uh, many-to-one relationship. Okay. So let's state the definition for a function from x to y. Let me go ahead and pull this up here. There we go. By the way, some of you guys have sent me, I am like five days behind on emails. Um, it's just this online thing. There's so much to do. I, I'm having to help with a bunch of other stuff on calc too also. And it's just the, the emails I've gotten. I know a lot of you have proctorio issues. You have questions. I'm going to try to get through them, but I'm like a week behind on the emails. So, um, I know that's frustrating and annoying. If you have something that's actually really urgent, just send me a direct message on discord. Um, I tend to, I tend to answer those from my phone, which is, you know, kind of always on me. Um, uh, if I'm not, uh, okay. So I apologize for the emails, but, um, I am behind on the emails. Uh, any other questions before we get started? Um, yeah. Someone's saying you heard him, please, uh, send, uh, more emails. Um, okay. Um, and I know you guys are having issues with Proctorio. The common one is that it just keeps, you know, it acts for an access code. If you refresh a few times, that should clear. If it doesn't, you have to uninstall and reinstall Proctorio browser extension. You hate Proctorio. I hate Proctorio. I guarantee you I hate more Proctorio more than you hate Proctorio. Proctorio sucks. Um, if you did have that issue, um, go ahead and send me a direct message. We'll deal with it. All right, so let's state a function. Again, this is an essay question. You can use words instead of symbols on the thing. So what is a function? So let the formal definition. Let f be a subset of x cross y. Okay. I could also write, let f be a collection of ordered pairs from x cross y, stuff like that. f is a function if two things are true. The first is that every x gets used. For all x in x, there is a y and y so that x y is in f okay the colloquial way to say this is every x gets used if i want to write this in quantifiers which is one of the things we're going to today this for all x would become this symbol This there exists a Y would become this symbol. And then the predicate would become this. Okay, I don't expect you to write that Sanskrit, um, especially not on the computer where it's asking you to type. Um, I do expect you to get this, these kind of quantifiers idea here in purple. Um, it's more than just every X gets used, although that's the way to think of it. Um, it's for all X, there is a Y. Um, and the reason why we're going to do that is because we're going to talk about that today when we talk about quantifiers and negation. So the first step to actually making a statement, something that a computer can understand, um, or that we can do logic tests on in a computer, is to actually formulate its, uh, its quantified definition. Okay. 
The second thing says, so this is every X gets used, is no X gets used more than once. So for all pairs, X1, X0, Y0, X1, Y1, uh, all distinct, let's do all distinct pairs of points. X0, Y0, X1, Y1. And you could have used different symbols than this, by the way. Um, X0 does not equal X1. Okay, the colloquial way to say this is no X is used more than once. Uh, this should be this should be a thing here that says N F. My bad there. X zero does not equal to X one. If I wanted to write this in quantifier notation, which is kind of a pain, I would do it like this for all sets of ordered pairs, all unordered pair of ordered pair. It, it's kind of annoying to say, but I'll do it like this. X zero, Y zero, X one, Y one, in F choose two. So this is two, this is two distinct points. There's the set, there's a set of two points, right? Remember, F is just a set of ordered pairs. So here's a set of two points uh, that are different. Uh, X0 does not equal X1. There are other ways to say it, um, but that would be kind of the formal quantifier way to say it. Uh, so this is also called the... Ver Oops. This is also called the vertical mind test. All right, so how do we feel about that? Um, how do we feel about that definition there, one to five? Uh, uh. Okay, so the way to do, if I give you a definition and I put it on a quiz, um, I, I, I really want you to like think of it this way. It's really easy. Now, if we were doing paper tests, you would get this kind of definite, you would get this statement on the test. Now, this is harder to do in, um, in online tests. I can give you kind of an essay question. Uh, but these are, you know, that's just, I, I give you a statement of a definition. The way to remember it is to think about something like this. Uh, so if I want to remember this definition, what I do is I make myself a little example. Um, and then I do something like this. So I use every X. I use at least one of them more than once. I do something like that. Every X is used. Uh, no X is used more than once. Um, so I just remember pictures when I do this. I can also do something like this where I've got zero, I'm sorry, A, B, C, D, zero, one, two. And I do something like, you know, A, zero, B, one, uh, C, D, two. All right, where no X is used more than once. Um, I, I it just depends what you're easier to remember. I did say essay, right? Yes. All right. Okay. So the reason why you want that definition is you just want to be able to check it and apply it. So A is one, two, B is, this is not even a set of ordered pairs.
This one right here is good, right? I've used every X, A, 1, I've used 1 and 2, and I've used none more than once. And these are both elements of B. So that one's good. Here, I've used this one more than once. This one, no, because this one's actually from B to A. Right, so the order matters. This right here is a function from B to A, and that's perfectly light legal, but I wanted functions from A to B. So that was one that was popularly missed. E is not a function because it's not a set of ordered pairs. Epsilon here is a function, right? 1A, 2C, I used every X and I didn't use one one once. That one's a function. 1B is not even a set of ordered pairs. Uh, 1A uh, did not use 2. 1A, 2B, that one's legal. 1B, 2B, that one's legal. So those are the legal ones. Okay. How do we feel about that question, one to five? D is not an answer because I didn't use two. So I have to use, I have to use every X. Every X gets used and no X is used more than once. Um, okay. All right. Are there any questions about this? Um, these formal definitions things, the first time you try to do it, they're very difficult. Um, so, you know, but they, they get easier. Um, you just have to keep practicing and making sure it misses. it. And you kind of just need to treat it like a checkbox, right? Um, ordered pairs so that this is true and that is true. Um, so... Yeah, so the criteria that says A cross B is this symbol X to Y, right? So, I'm sorry, A to B. So this right here, A to B, That's what that means. Um, so the function is a subset of A cross B, right? So this also says that F is a subset of A cross B. And if you think of functions um, in terms of just as sets of ordered pairs, they're actually a little bit easier to think of. Um, or it's a different perspective on them, so it makes them somewhat easier. Okay. All right, so this is the last uh, material that's kind of on the test um, um, that we're going to have. Obviously, we're going to have a quiz on it. Um, but the idea is we kind of went through the last of truth tables. And one of the things that I wanted you to get from the last exercise was this fact, okay? That, um, oh, let's see what's going on here. 
Mm -hmm. Let's leave, move Lewis, Lewis Carroll and De Morgan over a little bit so we've got more room. All right, so one of the things uh, from, the pro from the problem set three... is you needed this. You needed to understand this idea that P implies Q is logically equivalent to Q or not P. Okay? And when you did the truth tables for this, you got this kind of... So this thing right here, this is something a computer can't deal with. There's no, I mean, yes, you could program a logic gate for it. That's basically what you're doing. But the computer doesn't know really what to do with this in most languages. But it does know what to do that, with this here. Okay? So I can write, so this right here. Well, this kind of is. So if I want to write procedures that check these conditionals, I need to write it like this. Um, so the computer supports, the computer very much supports Um, the following. They really support um, AND, which, you know, you can see is this, and in PHP, AND is written like uh, it's double ampersand. Um, or, uh, which is the wedge up, and that's, uh, in PHP, that's the double bar, and not. And in PHP, it doesn't do not, uh, so not in this thing, or the bang. Okay, so, and then the computer can also support the statement for every. And uh, in PHP, it'd be a for each statement. So for every X in uh, A would be for each uh, A as X. So these are kind of the things that the computer, I mean, the computer really doesn't support this as a quantifier, but you can make the equivalent statements. So we need to be able to convert things with implications to things that look like this. Okay. And that's the idea behind doing these truth tables. So that was what you were supposed to get from, from the last kind of... Uh, the last uh, programming assignment and the last... Uh, Uh, this should be a hard wedge, by the way, a hard carrot. Um, that was the sort of thing you were supposed to get from the um, from the programming assignment. So how do we feel about this concept one to five? That these are the things that I can just really program into a computer. Um, right, and that's kind of the point to talking about them. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to kind of finish this off. And the way that we finish this off is we need to talk about formal quantifiers because there are two. There's there exists and for every. And the computer really doesn't support there exists very well. And then there's um, the idea of what happens when we run negation through things. And this has an implication for sets as well. Okay. So let's ask the question, what happens when I negate something? Okay. If I say, um, if I say that this card is the queen and this card, oops, I'm hitting the mic. 
this card is a queen and this card is a 10. What is the negation of that statement? If I'm saying that I have a queen and a 10, what would I do to negate that? Okay, so let's let P be the statement. Uh, I am holding the 10 of spades. And Q be the statement I am holding the queen of hearts. Okay. So now if I want to say I'm not holding the 10 of spades and the queen of hearts. Okay. So if I want to say, so P and Q would be what statement? Now, is it the opposite to say I am holding neither the Ten of Spades nor the Queen of Hearts? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to negate this statement. Okay. So is it, if I'm holding... If I'm holding neither of those statements, right? If I if 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 neither of those were true, right? This statement if I'm asserting that this is true and I'm holding this, right? Obviously, I'm lying. But if I'm holding this, if I tell you I'm holding the 10 of spades and the queen of hearts, but I'm holding the 7 of clubs and the queen of of hearts. Am I lying? Yes, the, the statement is false. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that not P so if P and Q, right? If P is true and Q is true and I assert that I'm holding, I am not holding P and Q, I'm lying. But if P is true and Q is false, well then what I've actually said, not P and Q, right? I'm not holding both the Ten of Spades and Queen of Hearts, right? I'm only holding one of them. So the assertion that I'm not holding both is true if I'm not holding one of them. How do we feel about that one to five? Now, let's flip this on the head. Let's say instead P or Q. If I'm holding, I'm saying that I am not holding. It is not the case that I am holding the Ten of Spades or the Queen of Hearts. Okay. So P or Q, if I'm holding either of them,
If I'm holding either of them, I'm in trouble, right? So true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. All right, so if I'm holding either one of them, this is true, making this false. If I'm holding either one of them, Okay. No, I'm not on quantifier yet. I'm not doing quantifiers yet. I'm going to get to quantifiers in a minute. All right, so let's do the other portion of this truth table. Well, what I want to do, this is true, right? This statement is false only if I'm holding both. So if I want to negate this statement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, right? So I've got P is true, so not P is false. Q is true, so not Q is false. And now what I've done is I've got not Q or not P. Well, both of these are false. That makes that false. One of these is true. So this is now true. This one's now true. And this one's now true. And now these two columns match. Likewise, if I put not P, not Q, here, and then I do not um, P and not Q, I'm going to have the same thing. False, false, a false, true, a true, true, false, false. And so and here is false, and here is false, and here is false. And here is true. Uh, I screwed that up. How do I, oh, that one should be true. And these are De Morgan's laws for propositional logic. Okay. So this is just negation of, this is the distribution of a neg negation. All right, so I've got not P and Q is logically equivalent. Did I use the, the triple equal signs? What did I use last time for logically equivalent? Uh, did I use the double arrow? They both mean the same thing. I'm trying to, I used the, the triple equal sign. Okay. Um, so this is logically equivalent to triple equal sign is what I used, um, to not P or not Q. And the other one is that not P or Q is the same thing as not P and not Q. 
How do we feel about that one to five? Uh, the triple, this means equivalent to. All right, so quantifiers. Recall there are three ways to instantiate a variable. Right, I can either define it right, for example, x is defined as two. Okay. So So if I'm, I'm not holding the ace of hearts and king of spades is logically equivalent I am holding to not holding is logically equivalent to I am not holding the ace of hearts or i am not holding the king of spades yes Uh, someone's asking about the up uh, the V thing. Yes, that's or and the carrot thing. The thing that looks like a carrot is and um, I suppose I could use ampersand, but I didn't feel like it. Sometimes you just have to go with the correct thing. Um, okay. So now let's see. I could say for every and these are the quantifiers. For every x in some set, or I could say there exists x in some set. So, for example, I could say that there exists an x in the deck of cards so that x is a joker. Oh, look, it's me. Right? Or I can say for every card, every X in the deck of cards, X is a joker, which is not true. Okay. And these are the ones we want to talk about here. All right. So let's do an example.
So if I say every card in the deck is a heart, okay? How do you say not every every card in the deck is a card? Uh, what is the word in the quotation marks before instantiate or create or whatever? Um, initialize might have been a better word. I think I used initialize in the end. Sorry. Um, for example, if I assert that every card in the deck is a heart, instantiates the math word for initialize. Um, instantiate, I, I create its existence. I create an instance. If I assert that every card in the deck is a heart, what is the opposite? If I say not every card in the deck is a heart, what's the opposite? Is it that there are no cards in the deck that are hearts? Am I saying every card is a spade? If I tell you that every card in the deck is a heart, how do you call me a liar? It's not that no cards in the deck are a heart, right? What is the negation? If I say to you every card in the deck is a heart and we have to settle this bet, what do you have to come up with? It's not that some cards in the card. That's not the opposite. It's not all. What does it mean, not all? I'm not saying they're not hearts in the deck. If I assert every card in the deck and there is a heart, I could still be lying. Yeah, there's at least one card that is not a heart, right? All I need to come up with is the seven of clubs to say that there's one card in the deck that's not. The negation would be, so if I want to say that, the negation is going to be this. So it is not the case I should just say not every card in the deck is the same as saying there exists a card in the deck that is not a heart. Okay? Is everyone on board with that? So when I had the quantifier, when I wanted to pass through, the for all became a there exists. Not every card in the deck is a heart is the same as saying there is a card in the deck that is not a heart. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay, so this sort of thing begs for some um, for some formalization, because you know we're math guys, or at least I am. So to formalize this, we need to formalize quantifiers. So this symbol right here for every x, Okay, and then there's another one. There exists an X in A. All 
Okay, so now I'm going to let P be a predicate. I'm going to let P be the statement. I'm going to let, so let PX be the statement. X is a heart. Okay. And it's not a function. A lot of books write it like this to make it look like a function, but it's not actually a function. It's the predicate P is a statement about subject X. Okay. PX, the, the, or X has property P. Property P being is a heart. Okay. If I want to say not for all X in whatever cards, PX, what I say is this. There exists an X in cards such that not PX. How do we feel about that? I know that there's two new symbols of Sanskrit up there. If I want to say, so this symbol, so PX is the statement X is a heart. If I want to say it is not the case that for all X in cards, X is a heart, I say that there exists an X in cards so that X is not a heart. Okay. Well, let's look at a set then. Okay. Let's look at the set X minus. So now we're going to be back to De Morgan's. Oh, and I'll, I'll write the other one real fast. Let me just write the other one as well. So the point is that whenever I pass a negation, I flip a quantifier. Okay. It's the same analogy. Um, negative X is greater than negative Y is the same as saying that uh, X is less than Y. Um, two numbers. If you find that analogy confusing, don't worry about it. So if I say, uh, negative three is greater than negative two. That's the same as saying, um, I'm sorry. If I say negative two is greater than uh, negative three, let's say one that's true. Negative two is greater than negative three. That's the same as saying that two is less than three.
You can think of it that way. And, and sort of a thing. I, I Just like I have to flip the signs on numbers, I also have to flip this. You know, just beca- just like I had to flip this thing, I also have to, when I do negation, I have to flip things. Um, now, if you find that analogy confusing, forget about it. Um, it's not the best analogy. Uh, some people like that connection. Other people hate it. All right, so let's do De Morgan's for sets. And it follows the same thing, right? Consider... X minus A union B as a set. Okay. If X is in little x is in X minus A union B, then what is true about little x? Right, because A union B is the set Okay, so how do we feel about that? Just just the setup here. One to five. So what I'm actually saying is that for every X in X minus A union B. X is in big X. And it is not the case that X is in A or X is in B. Right? So if I say this but not, what I mean is this and not, right? Because and and but are the same words in math. So what I've actually said is this. For every X in X, big, big X minus A union B, X is in X and it is not the case that X is in A or X is in B. Well, okay, let's make it worse. Let's put a quantifier in front of it. Oh, geez. Well, now we can play with it a little bit, right? So here's this big set X. Um, I'm, um, you know, drawing the big set X right behind my head. So here's A, here's B, and there's this giant set X. And what I've said is that I'm in X, but I'm not X. Little X is not, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, let's do the set U. Everybody erase that big X because now it's confusing even me. It looks fine when you type it because it's clear which one's which. Uh, we'll do a big U. Sorry about that. Now it's confusing even me. Okay, so where is X here? If X is in U minus A union B, that means X is not here, X is not here, X is not there, but X is out here.
Okay. How do we feel about that, 1 to 5? Now that I've redone my shape. Okay, well, I can't make everything work. Uh, U is now like the other sign. What do you want me to use? Give me a symbol then. Okay. W. Z. Okay. I, I can't do Z because I'll keep saying Z and everybody will think I'm from Canada. Okay. Well, now what I want to say... What else? How else can I put this? I've got this X in U, and it is not the case that X is here. I could also say for the same set... I could say the following, for all x in u minus a cup b, I could say x is in u and, and then distribute this quantifier. It is not the case that x is in a, and it is not the case that x is in b. Well, if it's not the case that X is in A, and it's not the case that X is in B, and it's the case that X is in U, okay? Just checking the both of them here. All right. Well, let's deal with this. Let's say I want to instead associate this statement here. I could also say the following. For all x in u minus a union b, x is in u. Huh. And not x in a and x is in u and not x in b hmm does that help at all or i could say for all x in u minus a union b, x is in u, not that. So I could say this right here is actually the intersection. So I could say that X is in the intersection of U minus A, U minus B. Which is the same thing as saying that U minus A union B equals and here's the punchline. In other words, I could have taken the intersection of U minus A. What does U minus A look like? So 
So I could have taken this right here as u minus a. And this is u minus b. And then taking what they have in common. Well, what do they have in common? They have in common this set here. Because this set has nothing in A, this set has nothing in B, and what I'm left with is this set here, right? I'm left with everything that's not in A that is also in everything not in B. How do we feel about that 1 to 5? No, I'm left with more than you. I'm left with the intersection of them. Same for the same reason. Okay. U minus A cap B equals u minus a union u minus b. Here I have said that x is in u but not both a and b. And here I have said x is in u but not a or x is in u but not b So these are the two, so I've got two De Morgan's laws. For each, okay? I've got two sets of De Morgan's law. I've got a logic version and a set version. The logic version says that not P and not Q is the exact same thing as uh, not P or Q. I've got the law that not P or not Q is the exact same thing as not P and Q. And then I've got the set laws u minus a cap b is the exact same thing equals u minus a union u minus b and then i've got u minus a or b is the same thing as u minus a and u minus b or intersect that's a g and those are called de morgan's laws and they're named after this guy augustus de morgan and then i've got negating quantifiers
And they're the same type of things. Okay, so how do we feel about the summary of this proper, these properties? Okay. So, let's do the set ones first. Okay, the cards are my set, my universe, you. All right, so the 52 cards in the deck are my universe. Okay. Now, A equals the face cards. B equals the clubs. Now, what is U minus A union B? I want A union B is what? Trust me, when we start dealing with multiple quantifiers in a row, the notation's going to make it better. But for the now, the quotation's making it more complicated. Okay, so... Right, so what is union... What is universe minus the cards minus the face cards union the clubs? So this is what? Uh, if X is in that set, then so this is the set of all cards that are neither face cards nor clubs okay how do we feel about that one to five that this the cards minus the face cards union the clubs is every card that is neither a face card nor a club. Now. Yes, there are three face cards that are also clubs, but who cares? Right? So it's neither here. They're neither face cards nor club. Now, U minus A intersect U minus B. This is the all the cards Right? U A X is not right. This is every X so that X is not a face card. And X is not a club. How do we feel about that?
So if X is not a face card and X is not a club, then X is not a face card or a club. How do we feel about that? One to five. So that means that X is in union is in uh, the universe cards minus a union B. And that's the example for the Morgans. Okay. All right. Now, why do I care? Suppose we take a statement with multiple quantifiers. Let's do the following statement. The limit as, uh, as x goes to a of f of x equals l if for every x and for every epsilon greater than zero, Oops, I'm doing my epsilons the wrong way. For every epsilon, I can't write today. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero so that, let's do just the left-hand side. For every x in the set, a minus delta a y is in the set uh, l minus epsilon l plus epsilon what okay so this is the definition of a limit from calculus exactly what the heck is this? I don't care. For the context of this class, I actually don't care. My question is, how do I negate it? Okay, I don't actually care. Um, did I do that right? Epsilon is, I don't know why my brain isn't working on this stuff today. No, that's epsilon. Okay. I don't actually care. My question is, how do I negate this statement? And in fact, I'm actually glad that you don't know what this means. Okay, I don't want you to know what this means because what I want is a formulaic way to negate it. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what's the opposite of this statement. How do I say that the limit is X? Because this might be something that I want to program something to check. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this right here. The limit 
as x goes to a, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to translate the statement. Right, this is the logical equivalency thing. I'm going to go for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, so that for all x in a minus delta a, y, or I should say f of x, f of x is in l minus epsilon l plus epsilon. Now, negation. That means that this is not true. Right? This is what I want. I want that the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x does not equal l. Well, that's the same thing as saying that it's not true that they're equal. So how do we feel about this statement being this statement, one to five? If two things are not, e if two things are not equal, then it is not the case that they are equal. So what I'm going to do is put a giant negation in front of this statement right here. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero so that for all x in a minus delta a, f of x is in l minus epsilon l plus epsilon. Again, I don't care what this says. It's a triple quantifier statement. Okay? But now I'm just going to apply the rule. You're not supposed to understand what it means. You're supposed to understand that I can negate something that's gibberish. Okay? You are supposed to get from this that you can negate something that is gibberish. I'm, I'm going to write that right here. You can negate something that is gibberish. I don't actually care what it says. This is true. I'm just going to run the quantifiers. Okay? It is not the case that for every epsilon becomes there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that it is not the case that there exists a delta greater than zero so that for every x in a minus delta A, F of X is in L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. Okay. Well, I just moved the quantifier. There exists an epsilon greater than zero so that this becomes, a, this is a not for all delta greater than zero, it is not the case that for all x in a minus delta a, I should have picked a shorter statement, shouldn't I? One, two, that one open there, that one close, that one, so I'm one, two, close, close. Okay. Well, that's the same thing as saying there exists an epsilon greater than zero, so that for all delta greater than zero, there exists an x in a minus delta a, so that f of x is not in l minus epsilon l plus epsilon. 
and I just negated the statement. This here is the same thing as this, and I didn't need to know what it was. In other words, if I took the statement not for every x in A, for every exists an x in B, so that for every, uh, let's see, I'll do this here, for every A in A, there exists a B and B so that for every C and C, um, P, X, and Q, X. So how would I negate that statement? I just pass the quantifier through. All right, so I just do, okay, this becomes there exists an A and A so that for all B and B, there exists a C and C so that uh, not PX add QX, which is the exact same thing as saying there exists an A and A for all B and B. Uh, this should actually be an uh, let's make this an A and let's make this a B. Let's make this an A and let's make this a B. Uh, there exists a C and C. Technically, I should actually use the C, but I didn't. How do you feel about that, 1 to 5? All I have to do when I want to negate a quantifier, a quantified statement, all, all I have to do is translate it into quantifiers. Okay? If I, if I translate it into quantifiers, I then pass it through. I just pass it through. So I could have said that for every suit in the deck, There exists a king in the suit so that the king, uh, there exists a face card in the suit um, Okay, so here's an example from just this one. For every suit in the... Oh, I'm out of time. I'm way out of time. Okay, so I still haven't figured out how to teach this subject here. Uh, but I'll try it again. For every suit in the deck, there exists a face card in the suit so that for every weapon in that card's drawing, the weapon is a sword. So I take my deck of cards that I flip through here. Uh, the Queen of Spades in this one is holding a margar it is holding a strawberry daiquiri. Um, I don't think this is actually going to work for a deck of cards. Um, okay, so. For every suit in the deck, there exists a face card in the suit, so that for every weapon in that card's drawing, the weapon is a sword. So here I've got the king of, of clubs, and he's got a sword. Okay, let's see. Can I find a heart with the swords only? The jack of hearts is axis. Uh, I think the jack of clubs is carrying a spear. 
the Queen of Hearts has flowers. The Queen of Spades has something else. The King of Spades, there's a sword. The King of Hearts has a sword. What's the King of Diamonds carrying? Up, oh, the King of Diamonds has an axe. So it's not true. Right? Why is it not true? Well, because while the kings of hearts, clubs, and spades have swords, the 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 diamonds cards uh this is like a scimitar that he's carrying or something not a saw guitar, but something weird. And the Queen of Diamonds is holding flowers. So there is a suit. Negation. Okay, here's the negation. There is a suit. Okay. How do we feel about that one to five? And then I promise I'm done. The point is that I can take extremely complicated statements and negate them by simply switching the quantifiers. All right. Okay. All right, so last time, as I said, this is the cutoff for the test. Um, we finished truth tables last time, and we did the definition of a function. We went over to Morgan's of quantifiers, and we negated a bunch of quantifiers. Okay? Um, so that was the point of today, was how to negate quantifiers and pass the negation. The purpose is that we can program things to do we could program computers to deal with for every's pretty easily, and we could program them to do with nots. It's harder for to program a loop that doesn't there exists. They don't really want to do that. So what we usually do when we want to say there exists in a loop, we want to check the condition like for every x here, x is greater than three. What we I'm sorry, we we want to check that there exists a x in the set so that x is greater than three. What we usually do is we do a for each loop over all of them for the negation of that. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, I've got office hours tomorrow. I will post the quiz now that I know how far I got. Um, and the test is on Friday. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All right. So that's all I've got for today. Um, uh, sorry for going a little bit over. Um, it's almost five now, so I was supposed to end at 445. Um, and I will talk to you guys later.